hope you're well. Really miss hanging out with you in Glory Club. Miss making lots of mess with glue and glitter and paint and stuff. I hope you're all well. I hope you've been really, really good and having fun at school. And I really hope we can see, see each other again soon. Today I thought I'd read you a little story. It's from this book and it's called God Makes a Way. And it's from Exodus 14 to 15. Ready? Moses and God's people escaped out of Egypt and into the wilderness. They didn't know the way, but God knew the way and he would show them. I will bring you to a new home, a special land, God promised them. I will look after you. I am with you. God sent a big cloud for them to follow, a pillar of smoke stretching up to the sky. It moved in front of them as they walked and shaded them from the blazing heat of the day. And when it was time to rest, it stopped. How amazing is that? God is so awesome. He always looks after us, doesn't he? All through the cold desert nights, it kept them warm, glowing like fire. God led his people through the desert to the edge of the Great Sea. They were just wondering how to cross it when suddenly they heard a terrible thundering and pounded. It sounded almost like horses' hooves. They shaded their eyes to look back and screamed. It was! <gasps> Pharaoh and his army were coming to get them. Pharaoh had changed his mind again. Get my slaves back! He screeched and charged out into the desert after them with 600 of his fastest horsemen and every single chariot in Egypt. That must have been scary, hey? What were God's people going to do? In front of them was a big sea. It was so big there was no way round it. There was no way through it. It was too deep. They didn't have any boats. They couldn't sail across it. They couldn't swim across either. It was too far and they'd drown. And they wouldn't, couldn't turn back because Pharaoh was chasing them. They could see the flashing swords now glinting in the baking sun and the dust clouds and the chariot after scary chariot surging towards them. So they did the only thing there was left to do. Panic. We're gonna die, they shrieked. Don't be afraid, Moses said. There's nothing we can do, they screamed. God knows you can't do anything, Moses said. God will do it for you. Trust him. But there's no way out, they cried. God will make a way, Moses said. Another minute and it would have all been over. But then the strangest thing happened. God, no, he really is awesome. God made the pillar of smoke move. It moved behind his people and hid them from the Egyptians. Then God sent a strong wind to blow east all night long. It blew on the water of the big sea. It blew to the left, it blew to the right, until it blew into two towering walls of water. And there, right through the middle of the sea, a muddy pathway opened up. And God's people walked across dry land. Wow, how awesome is God? When the Egyptians tried to follow, the walls of water crashed back down on them and swallowed them up. But God's people were safe. They danced and laughed and sang and thanked God. Where there had been no way out, God had made a way. Many years later, once again, God was going to make a way where there was no way. From the beginning, God's children had been running from him and hiding. God knew his children could never be happy without him, but they couldn't get back to him by themselves. They were lost. They didn't know the way back, but God knew the way. One day he would show them. Wow, what an amazing story of how absolutely incredible our God is. Now, through the sermon, you should have been given a colouring sheet. So give it a little colour in, make it look really, really beautiful. And hopefully we can see some of them soon. Take care. Bye.
morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, family. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Good morning. Morning, church. Hello. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Morning. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hello, all. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, church. 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 Hi, church. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning, church. Good morning, and welcome to New Life Church. Good morning, and welcome to New Life Church. We're still online, but looking forward to being back in the building as soon as we possibly can. Uh, but meantime. Uh, John and the band are going to lead us in the song of worship. Let me encourage you to engage with us as we worship God. Let's stand, let's sing, let's clap. Uh, we can't sing together, but we can sing where, when we're in our homes. So let's do that now as we go over to John. so loved by you and we're so thankful for all that you've done for us this morning 
Lord, we want to bless you. We want to worship you. We want to praise you. All glory and honor is due your name. Hallelujah. Amen. Brilliant. What a great way to kick off our time together uh, this morning. Thanks so much, guys. We look forward to worshiping again shortly. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but over the last few weeks, there's definitely been a theme to what we're preaching, and it's been unintentional. Everybody that's preached recently, I've said to them, you know, preach on whatever you feel like God's given you. And there's been a real theme of encouragement coming through. Um, It's been an encouragement to those of us that have enjoyed the sermons, but also an encouragement to be encouragers. Um, And when I look through my life, I'm really grateful for men and women who have been real encouragers. Um, And this morning, it's a real privilege for me to be able to welcome one of the most encouraging people I know, Mark Thornett. Now, Mark leads Apex Church on the Isle of Wight. But at the age of 19, I moved from Worcester to Swindon and Mark and his family, Jackie, um, and at the time, Lauren and Katie really took me under their wings. Uh, They fed me regularly. We had lots of fun together. Um, And they really modelled for me and for Fiona and I what a Christ-centred family looks like. Um, And then as the years have gone on, Mark took on leading Gateway Church Swindon and brought me into eldership uh, in that church. And they also had Megan, who many of us at New Life know because she works for us. Um, And so this morning to be able to welcome Mark to open up the word of God for us is a real privilege, a real joy. I love hearing him preach. Um, And when I asked him, would he consider um, preparing something for us? He said straight away, yes, I would love to. And then within 10 minutes, got in touch with me and said, God's really spoken to me um, and has given me a word for the church, which I believe is going to really minister to people. So this morning, I'm quite excited to hear from Mark. um, And I hope you are too. Let's trust that God will speak to you. Uh, will encourage you and will uh, challenge you as we look at his word together. So over to my dear friend, Mark Thornett. Well, thanks to Simon. I do uh, appreciate your friendship over all these years. And uh, also just want to say a big hello to all of you at New Life. Uh, It's great to be with you. I'm sorry I can't be with you in in person, but... uh, It's great to be with you this morning. And also, if I may be allowed, just a special uh, hello to to Meg and Ali. Love you guys. Missing you. Hope we can see each other soon. Um, I was saying to someone the other day that if there was uh, something that was to be written on my gravestone, not that I'm expecting to to go anywhere soon, as far as I know, but uh, if there was something to be written on my gravestone, I'd love it to say, he loved the Lord Jesus and he loved his family. And uh, I'm not going to particularly talk about my, my family today. Uh, Meg will be pleased to hear that, I'm sure. Um, but I would love to talk, and do love to talk, about the Lord Jesus. And uh, I want to tell you a story, take you through a story, that in fact is in three of the Gospels in the New Testament. It's in Matthew, it's in Mark, and in Luke. And today I want us to look at Mark's version uh, of this particular story of an encounter, in fact, encounters with Jesus. It's in Mark chapter 5. I'm going to tell it, as it were, but if you'd like to follow along, you can look at it. Mark chapter 5, verses 21 to 43. The story begins with, as is often the case, Jesus is crossing some water. He's in a boat. He's uh, crossing the lake of Galilee. And he comes to the other side. And it says that there was a large crowd gathered on the beach. They're waiting for him. And in the, the midst of this crowd was a very important local leader. His name was Jairus. He was, in fact, in charge of what was known as the synagogue. The synagogue was a special meeting place. It was a place of community, but it was a place, of course, of worship of God for the Jewish people. And wonderfully, it says that when he saw Jesus, he literally fell at his feet, pleading desperately. And this is what he said. He said, my little daughter is dying. The Bible tells us, Mark tells us, others tell us that she was probably about 12 years old. 
And Jairus said, please, won't you come and lay your hands on her and heal her so that she can live? Well, wonderfully, Jesus agreed and he started to go with Jairus. And it says that a great crowd followed them. <clears throat> now, in this crowd, there was another person who also wanted to meet with Jesus. Well, in fact, it wasn't so much she wanted to meet with him, she simply just wanted to touch a part of him, maybe just a part of his clothing. Because she said that if I can touch him, I know that I will be healed. This woman had been suffering with a terrible illness. It was a physical illness. It was, uh, she had been bleeding for a, a, at least 12 years. She'd seen many doctors. Uh, they had not treated her well, uh, we are told. She'd spent every single penny that she had. And far from her getting better, she'd actually got worse. But there's this wonderful phrase, but she had heard about Jesus. She had heard about Jesus. And so she gets into the crowd, she comes up behind Jesus and she reaches out to touch his cloak, to touch his robe, because she said, if I can just touch even his clothes, I know that I will be healed. So as she reaches out, as she touches, an amazing thing happens. The Bible says immediately her illness stopped. It actually says she could feel in her body that she had been healed. But there's something also very interesting that happens in that moment. Because Mark also says that Jesus immediately knew that healing power had gone out from him. Something had happened, specifically healing power had gone out. And so Jesus turns around, he, he looks around, he said, who touched my clothes? Now, you need to understand that the disciples who were there with him, and they're going, what? 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 You must be crazy. Look at the crowds that are, that are pushing in. How can you say, who touched me? In fact, in Luke 8, if you leak, uh, read Luke's version of this story, it says the crowd was almost crushing him. And yet Jesus knew. Jesus knew that this was something different. This was just not the, the milling crowd, as it were. Someone had intentionally reached out and touched him. And so he kept looking around to see who had done it. Now the woman's quite frightened, understandably, not least of which because of the amazing thing that had just happened to her. So she's, she's shaking, but she comes and, and she falls again on her knees in front of Jesus. And she tells him everything. And Jesus wonderfully says to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Your suffering is over. And even as I just continue uh, on with this story, I just felt as I was thinking and, and, and praying and reflecting after Simon had been in touch with me, I felt that that phrase is for at least somebody uh, in, in, uh, in your life, in New Life Church there. Go in peace. Go in peace, that the Lord is even touching you right now, wants to meet with you. He's touching you right now and he's speaking his peace to you. Just want to encourage you to receive those words of Jesus. Daughter, your faith has made you well. It's not just limited to women, I believe this is for men also. But that word of Jesus, go in peace, your suffering is over. That's the phrase particularly that caught my eye and my spirit. Your suffering is over. Just receive that this morning. Well, while he was still speaking to her, uh, some messengers came from Jairus' house. Uh, you remember, we were talking about him just now, Jairus, the special leader in the, in the community. And they, and they said to him, don't bother the teacher anymore. That, that was their name for Jesus. Uh, your daughter has died. 
Now Jesus overheard what they were saying and he turned to Jairus and he said, don't be afraid, have faith. Don't be afraid, have faith. Interestingly, at this point, Jesus also did something else. He turned to the crowd and he said, stop, that's enough, no further. You're not coming any further. You can imagine people, oh, what? Oh, we want to come. No, stay here. Come back to that in a moment. But he said, come no further, except for Peter, James, uh, and his brother John. And on they went to Jairus' house. Now, when they got to Jairus' house, they heard a really loud sound, the sound of, of crying and of wailing. Jesus uh, went inside and he, he says, what's all this noise about? Why all the crying and the wailing? This child isn't dead, she's only asleep. At which point the crowd laughed at him. And so I love this phrase, Jesus made them all leave as well. Made them leave, go, go away. He took the, the girl's father and mother and the three disciples and they went into the room where the little girl was lying. And uh, in my mind's eye, it doesn't say this, but it, it says it gently took her by the hand. I think Jesus knelt. He knelt down at the bedside, took her by the hand and he said, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. Immediately, Mark says. That's that wonderful word in Mark. Immediately, she stood up and she started walking around. And a wonderful understatement of the Bible. Everyone was completely overwhelmed and totally amazed. I should think they were. Jesus gave strict instructions not to tell anyone, but to give her something to eat. Well, you can have a discussion around your uh, lunch tables or your tea tables uh, as to why. Why did he tell them not to tell anyone else? Um, I'll leave that one with you. You can ask Simon about that another time. <laughs> but here's two amazing stories. So, so what can we learn just in a, in a few moments? What can uh, we learn from these two stories? Here are two very different people. One... Uh, well known, I'm sure, in the community, a man of high standing, uh, maybe not a man who was proud but he, uh, in that sense, but he, w he would have been pleased to have been the leader in his community, the leader of the synagogue for sure. Another, though, lowly, probably known, but known for all the wrong reasons, known because she was an outcast. Don't you come near us, you're unclean. You can't come to the synagogue. You can't come to our house. In fact, please don't come down our street. Because of her illness, she certainly would have been on the edge of the community. So two very different people in the community, but both were desperate. They were out of options, clearly. Out of options. But this wonderful phrase, they came to Jesus. They both found loving, merciful power. They found access to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And that's one of the things I love about the Lord Jesus, is that there is access for all. doesn't matter who you are. doesn't matter your standing in the community, however high, whatever celebrity status or not. However lowly, however isolated, however alone, there is access to the Lord Jesus. Both of them were in great need of a touch from him. Both of them knew that just a touch from him could make all the difference. Jairus, please come and lay your hands on her and heal her so she can live. The woman, if I can just touch even his clothes, I know that I will be healed. I just want to say to you today, are you desperate? Are you hurting? Are you struggling? Are there challenges that you're living with? Jesus, the Lord Jesus, is the very best person to come to. We're living in a world of choice. There's all sorts of choices uh, that are being offered to us, although at the moment people are challenged because they don't feel in control. 
But there are places we can go. People will offer us all sorts of options and choices as to where we might go to meet our needs. But there is a decision that is before us. Who will we go to? Where will we go in our desperation, in our hunger, in our desire uh, for encounter? Sometimes we have to get desperate before we will come to the living truth, before we will come to the one who has the answer. I want to say today, when you come to Jesus, you come to the right place. When you come to Christ the Messiah, when you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, you come to the right place. Where are you looking? Are you looking in the right place? Well, it can be a battle, but it's worth fighting for. This woman pushes through. Jairus throws himself on his knees before Jesus. But I want to encourage us in these days that, yes, there may be barriers, there may be obstacles in front of us, whether that be emotional, our self-reliance, our pride, or physical, uh, the the crowds of those around us, whether it even might be uh, face masks or other things. But we, 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 we fight through, we push through that we might touch Jesus, that we might encounter him. And the thing about these two is that they came with faith. I want you to hear that this morning. Jairus, if you will just come and lay your hands. The woman, if I can just touch even his clothes, I know. Jairus, I know. The woman, I know. Interestingly, Jesus picks up on this faith uh, with both of them. Daughter, your faith has made you well. Jairus, Don't be afraid, have faith. Faith is about believing. Believing. I can't do it. Others can't do it, but Jesus can. I want you to notice that both of them fell on their feet before Jesus. It's a a complete sign of surrender. I give up. No one else can help. Only you can help. And they surrender before the Lord Jesus. Now, I just want to say this. I don't want us to get into to guilt or condemnation because it's not always the faith of the person. You say, uh, sometimes somebody will say, you just need some more faith. And you say, trust me, I've been trying. So it's not that we're somehow trying to find something. In other stories with people who came to Jesus, it, it's... Uh, It wasn't the faith of the person themselves. You think about the little girl. It's quite possible she was unconscious. She had nothing to do. But someone, there is faith in the room. Someone has faith. In this case, it's her father, uh, the disciples coming with Jesus. With this woman, it was her faith. But faith is involved. Belief is involved. Whether that be a friend, a parent, a disciple, a follower of Jesus. Jesus says to to Jairus, don't be afraid, have faith. I don't believe Jesus was criticising Jairus for worrying about his daughter, but rather, Jairus, you came with faith, now don't let it be robbed. Hold on. The friends have come and whispered in your ear, don't bother the teacher anymore, your daughter has died. No, don't be afraid. Don't be robbed. Have faith. Hold on. Truth is coming. Power is coming. Healing is coming. Interesting to note that Jesus stopped the crowd from coming to Jairus' house. And also how he dismissed those mourners. It's interesting, uh, in those days, sometimes people would actually be paid to come and weep and wail, to sort of display grief. might not necessarily be their own grief, but they were paid to grieve and to make a lot of noise, as it were. The crowd, of course, as we, as we look at them, why were they there? I think some of them were there just to see a miracle. They were looking for a performance. Others, of course, were religious leaders. We know that they were trying to catch Jesus out. Some of them were there as cynics. They were watching him. There was all sorts of reasons that the crowd were there. Spectators, religious leaders. This woman and Jairus, both of them, 
They reach out with faith. And it says Jesus knew that power had gone out from him. You see, I don't believe the crowd really knew who they were walking with. They were looking for a performance. Maybe they were checking out his theology. But I don't think they really understood. But these two understood. They knew who it was that they were reaching out to. I, I love the bit in The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe where uh, Mr and Mrs Beaver tell Lucy that Aslan is a lion. In fact, the great lion. And Susan says, a lion? Is he quite safe? I shall feel rather nervous about meeting a lion. That you will, dearie, and no mistake, says Mrs Beaver. If there's anyone who can appear before Aslan without their knees knocking, they're either braver than most or just silly. Then he isn't safe, said Lucy. Safe, said Mr Beaver. Don't you hear what Mrs Beaver tells you? Who said anything about being safe? Of course he isn't safe, but he is good. He's the king, I tell you. There's many lessons that we can learn from these last eight months that we've been walking through as a nation and as a world. But one of the things that I think many of us are needing to grasp again and understand again, that church, the church of Jesus Christ, is not just a hobby. The Lord Jesus is not just a figurehead. He's not just a nice person, even what we might call safe. But he is good. He is the King, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And he speaks to us today. He speaks to each one of us and says, don't be afraid, have faith. When the doubts, when the fears, anxiety, negative voices come, either from within us or from others around us, we need to listen to the one who says, don't be afraid, have faith, trust me. Follow me, believe in me. Now, I'd like just to take a moment uh, just to lead us in prayer as we reflect on this story together. Let's, let's pray and just open your hearts, open your spirits to what I believe God wants to do as the Spirit applies these great truths to us today. Lord Jesus, we, we thank you that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We thank you for the revelation that has come to us. We thank you for the glimpses that we have understood who you are, that you are the great and mighty God, that you're our saviour, that you're our healer. And Lord, I just want to pray for each one uh, looking in this morning whether they know lots about you or whether they're discovering you for the first time. Lord, I thank you that we can come. We can come to you. And I just want to invite each one of you to come even now. Come to the Lord Jesus. Don't stay on the edge of the crowd. Don't just spectate, but come to him this morning. Come to him. Come on your knees before him. Bring your, your need, bring your concerns, bring your doubts, your fears, your, your hurts. Bring them to him, recognising that only he can satisfy, only he can meet your need. Wherever else you may have looked, whoever else you may have come to or gone to, I want to encourage you this morning to come to Jesus and to say, Jesus, you, you're the one. I want to encourage you, throw off doubt, throw off fear, throw off cynicism and come. Come and surrender to him. Just believe that for some of you, even as I spoke a bit earlier, there's some who need to receive that word of peace this morning. The Lord Jesus would speak over you, go in peace, your suffering is over. Would you come, even this morning, Lord, across the airwaves, across the internet, and would you lay your hand upon different lives? 
those who have need, come. Come. Come and touch your people today. Just a picture in my own heart of the Lord Jesus walking into your houses, into your homes, into your lounges, your dining rooms, wherever you are. Coming right now, laying his hands on your head, on your shoulders. Lord, thank you for your touch. Thank you that you come and meet with your people. Lord, I pray for those who are battling, struggling, that find that there are barriers in the way at the moment, emotional, spiritual, physical even. Lord, I pray. I pray for strength to push through, to reach and to touch you. Thank you that you're so available to us. Thank you that there is access to us. Thank you, Lord, that you look to us. You do not judge and condemn, but you look to bless us. We reach to you today. Lord Jesus, I, I thank you for this fellowship. I thank you for the people who are part of it. I thank you for those who are, are looking on. I pray, Lord, that you would meet each one. And I speak the blessing of the Lord Jesus Christ upon each one of you today. May you be encouraged, built up and strengthened as you look to Jesus. In his precious name. Amen. Well, it's uh, great to have been with you. I'm going to hand over now to your worship team who are going to lead you uh, in some, some worship and reflection. I encourage you, uh, keep being open to what the Lord Jesus wants to do uh, in you and with you and through you. Uh, be blessed, New Life Church. It's been great to have been with you.
you're so worthy of our praise and glory and honor it's all for you
Father, we're so thankful that you are our Father, Lord. You love us. We're your children. We're part of your kingdom. We're your heirs, in fact. We're so thankful for that, Lord. We're thankful for all the promises we have in you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thanks so much, John. Thanks uh, the rest of the band playing. Um, thank you for all of those who've been contributing. Thanks, Mark, for your preach to us. And uh, thanks for those who are supporting us last night as we were uh, online in the community. Very much looking forward to seeing what, uh, what fruit will come from that, which should, should be great. Um, so now we're going to go, uh, we're going to finish this meeting, but the Zoom room's going to be open. And let me encourage you, come in and have a chat with us all. Uh, it's, it's great to we'll be in breakout rooms and it's just great to catch up with one another. It's a bit like the, that after the service fellowship that we were so used to having. Uh, we're rebuilding those friendships wonderfully in the Zoom room. So, uh, so go for the Zoom. Uh, if you haven't installed it, install it quickly. It's, it's free, it's dead easy to use and uh, look forward to seeing you, as many of you as can make it there as soon as possible. Bye for now. <laughs>